Welcome to another movie plot. Spoilers ahead. A genocidal race called the Necromongers is crusading across the galaxy, searching for a constellation of dark new worlds called Underverse. If the inhabitants of a world they encounter on the pilgrimage will not convert to their fanatical way of life, their entire planet is destroyed. The Lord Marshal is a man that visited these dark worlds and returned a different being, using their advanced technology he activates their world-ending statues to destroy another rebelling civilization. In another part of the galaxy a long-haired man is running across the frozen surface of Planet 6 in the UV system, being chased by a mercenary ship flown by Captain Toombs. The eager hunter and his crew pursue a fugitive with a large bounty on his head by the name of Richard B. Riddick, using a net launcher they come close to snagging him but only manage to clip him. Riddick lures Tombs into a cave where he is able to get high ground on his attackers, then proceeds to kill the three-man crew one by one without any of them even seeing him coming, saving the captain for last. Riddick climbs aboard the ship and interrogates Tombs about the contract, to which the cowardly Merc spills all the beans. He tells his captor that the bounty on his head is 1.5 million, and was offered by a man on the planet of Helion Prime. Riddick thanks Tombs and throws him out to freeze to death on Planet 6, while he flies away in his new wings. He proceeds to put himself into a cryosleep to wait out his journey to Helion Prime, but is suddenly woken up at his destination to turbulence and a blinding sun. The locals try to escort him down to the ground but Riddick isn't having any of it, shoulder checking the security shuttle and making his own way. On the surface of Helion Prime we follow the holy man named Imam, who arrives at home to Riddick already waiting, shaving his head, and pissed off about the bounty. Riddick saved Imam and a girl named Jack from an alien planet five years earlier. But the survivor has since gone on to have a family. A group of soldiers arrive at the house to speak with Riddick, being led by an ethereal named Arian who put the bounty on his head. She explains to Riddick what the Necromongers can do and that they need his help, saying that the Grand Marshal is afraid of Furians and that Riddick is possibly the last one of his race left alive. Just then Helian Prime guards break down Imam's door looking for the criminal, they drag the people from the house and find him standing alone in a candlelit room. Riddick snuffs the candles out and proceeds to kill all of the guards thanks to his night vision, as they erratically fire around the place probably shooting each other in the process. Imam explains that Jack ran away in search of her savior and eventually wound up on the prison planet of Crematoria for murder. As Riddick leaves Imam's house, we are shown that the shooting stars above the planet are in Necromunger Armada heading straight towards the planet's surface. With Riddick not being able to get back to his ship, he watches on as the Necromunger fleet descends on Helion Prime, crashing into the ground and killing all power. The Necromungers deploy fighters, while the planet's defense force tries to combat the threat. Any success the Helion fighters have is overshadowed by the vast number of Necros emerging from their ships, they flood the planet's surface killing everything in sight. Melee Necro units ignore their counterparts' blasters, charging straight in for close quarter combat. Whenever the Necromunger captains fail in battle they abuse their ability to activate a smaller version of the World Enders. The victorious Helion guard watches on mesmerized as thousands more Necros surround them, before the mini-orb descends into the ground killing everything in its radius. The invaders use decaying human bloodhounds called Lensers, to pick up any enemy heat signatures. Riddick finds Imam and his family and tries to get them to safety, but comes across a Lenser squad being led by the backstab General Eargun. Imam leads them away from his wife and daughter but another Lenser spots them, requiring Riddick to break its neck. With nowhere else to go and with Eargun having caught up to him, the holy man Imam confronts his enemy. Riddick arrives late to find the squad leaving, and his old friend lying dead having been thrown from the balcony. When the battle is over and the planet is conquered, Lord Marshall gathers all of the remaining people in a town hall. We meet more of the main Necromonger leaders, the Purifier, who explains to all the people that he was once like them but converted, and that they will all be slain if they don't. And one of the Necro's best warriors Commander Vako, as well as his wife Dame Vako. Lord Marshall tells the hostages to bow down before him, when one townsman speaks out in defiance the Marshal rips out his soul. So everyone else drops to their knees in fear of the same fate. Except for Riddick who stays standing and points out Imam's killer ear gun, saying that he wants a piece of him. The Lord Marshal's best warrior obliges and approaches Riddick swinging his axes wildly. Riddick slips the attacks and stabs Eargun's back knife deeper into him, killing the overhyped general with ease. With the Lord Marshal impressed by Riddick's performance, he is Dame Vako taken back to the command ship. Walking through it he sees all of the townspeople being converted, being told that one pain can lessen another. Dame Vako leads him into a room where the Lord Marshal runs a test on Riddick to see what race he's from. A machine pins Riddick to the floor and deploys a bunch of oracles. They all begin screaming that he is a Furian and must kill him since Furians are super effective against Lord Marshals. 
But before they can kill him Riddick is released from the machine's magnet by the purifier, who watches on as Riddick shoots his way out through one of the Oracle dispensers. A sarcophagus-class ship chases Riddick through the streets of Helion, when it is suddenly hit by rockets and sent crashing to the ground. The shooters of the rockets are a new five-man crew of mercenaries led by Tombs, having escaped the frozen planet and tracked his ship to Helion Prime. Riddick surrenders to the new mercenary Eve and they take him back to Tomb's ship, where they deploy a decoy for the necromongers to follow. With the prisoner chained up they decide on who would pay the most for Riddick's head, so Riddick mind tricks Tombs into thinking it's his own idea to take him to the prison planet crematoria where Jack is being held. Vako uses a lencer to track their ship's trajectory and alerts the Lord Marshal, who orders Vako to personally track down Riddick and kill him. Dame Vako whispers in her husband's ear, telling him that if he succeeds in killing the Marshal he would become the new king, repeating their slogan, you keep what you kill. After his departure, Dame Vako questions Arian as to the prophecy surrounding Riddick, being told that a Furian male is said to kill the Marshal, she relays this through Oracle Vision to her husband, while being overheard by Purifier having accompanied Vako on his trip. Before arriving at the prison planet, Mercenary Eve gives the sleeping Riddick a big sniff from the crotch to carotid. He wakes up and catches her but just lets her go. Crematoria is a planet with a hostile desert surface, where stepping outside for only a few seconds burns you to ash. Tombs and the crew arrive in a hurry and race down to the surface to try and beat the rising sun. They manage to make it inside a hangar just in time, and strap Riddick onto a skiff to take him to the underground prison of Crematoria. One of Tombs' new men sits on Riddick's chest for the ride and threatens to take his goggles, so as they speed through a tunnel Riddick raises the Merc into a passing light, killing him. The slam boss meets the mercs at the bottom and invites Tombs to stay overnight, so they can discuss the amount of money he'll be paying for Riddick, while suspending the new transfer in the center of the prison for all the inmates to gawk at. As they discuss their terms Riddick uses gravity to break free from the chains. A prisoner tries to attack Riddick but he is killed by Jack, who tells him that she now goes by the name Kira, and takes off. On crematoria it's feeding time, where the guards release wild animals to feed on the prisoners unlucky enough to be stuck outside of the cells. As the prisoners spend their time avoiding the chameleon cats the Furion notices that they have the same eyes, and behave friendly towards him. Kira is attacked by a group of prisoners and is knocked to the ground, but suddenly Riddick shows up and kills one of them with a teacup, scaring the others away with threats. Kira tells him that she befriended some mercs to find him when she was young, but they enslaved her so she killed them, getting her sent to crematoria as a murderer. While Riddick plans a way of escape, Tombs and his crew are told by the slam boss that they have been tracked from Helios Prime. Realizing a betrayal is incoming, a fight breaks out between the two crews, but is ended when Anatoly fires off a rocket killing Tombs' remaining crew and disabling the sled to the hangar. Tombs only survives by using a rope to dangle below the room for safety, but Riddick sees him hanging and uses it to enter, locking Tombs with the dogs and leaving him to die, again. The surviving prison guards take the safe route through tunnels beneath the surface to the hangars, while Riddick takes a group of prisoners across the surface hoping to beat them. The guards shoot through peepholes to try slow the prisoners down, but Riddick surprises Anatoly and kills him, causing a brief shootout to take place. While scaling a cliff to the hangar we see the result of the rising sun, it burns the surface requiring the team to hide in the shade, with Riddick and half the team safe on top, Kira and some others fell behind, trapping them on the side of the cliff. Before the following heat wave makes impact, Riddick drenches himself in water and uses a rope to swing Kira to safety, barely managing to rescue her while the other lingerers burn to ash. The survivors on the surface reach the hangar but see a small army of necromonger forces arrive being led by Vako. The search party detects Riddick's group, but before they can retrieve them the hangar doors suddenly open and the slam boss and crew are caught by surprise. They engage the necromongers in a firefight, inadvertently giving the surface runners the ability to flank them. With only three minutes until the sun makes it over the cliff, they run down the mountain and join the battle, but one by one the slam boss and all of the prisoners and guards are picked off. Riddick is shot by Vako and stunned, but before he can kill him, unknown fury and power bursts from Riddick knocking the necromongers away. Riddick lies out in the open as the sun's rays begin to roll in and burn everyone, so Vako and the necromongers leave him to die while Kira having no other option, joins them to survive. But the unconscious Riddick is dragged to the safety of the hangar by the purifier, who explains to Riddick that the necromonger in him warns him against killing the marshal, but the fury in him hopes he ignores him. He leaves Riddick all of his armor and walks into the sun's rays, disintegrating to ashes before him. So Riddick takes Tomb's ship and flies it back to Helion Prime. On the Necromonger capital ship, Vako is promoted to commander by Lord Marshal for his success, before the angry leader demands the fleet leave immediately, leaving many of his own people to die in the coming reckoning. Dame Vako notices that Riddick has snuck on board wearing Necromonger armor due to his glowing eyes. 
When she informs Vako they come up with the idea to let the Furion try to wound the Marshal, so that Vako can finish him off and become the new Lord of the Necromongers. Riddick sneaks into Lord Marshall's throne room through the Oracle Dispensers, stabbing the only guards in his way, Riddick tries to catch the leader from behind but is foiled. Marshall tries to convince him to join them and even brings out a remade Kira, having had the hole in her neck treatment and being converted to Necromonger. An angry Riddick manages to draw blood from the Marshall with his knife, which causes the Marshall to get eager for a fight. The army forms a circle around Riddick and Marshall as they begin to fight, but every time Riddick swings at Marshall he teleports somewhere else. Riddick begins to predict some of the Marshal's moves, before getting knocked to the ground and almost having his soul removed, but the Fury and Soul fights back and resists the suction. So the Marshal cheats, using a weapon he knocks Riddick to the ground and begins to choke him to death, but is stabbed in the back by Kira with a spear. Marshal hits her, sending her flying backwards into some spiky decor that impales her. Kill the beast while it's wounded! Seeing this as an opportunity to keep what he kills, Vako takes an axe and jumps down with ill intentions. He takes a swing at the marshal but his ghost form runs away, bringing him to the feet of Riddick, he has no other choice but to bring his body into the line of Riddick's descending knife. Riddick snaps it off as the room watches on in amazement, with many of the converted having believed the marshal immortal. Riddick goes to see Kira but she ends up bleeding out in his arms. He collapses back into Lord Marshall's throne as Vako and the rest of the Necromongers approach. They follow Vako's lead and all bow before the new leader of the Necromongers. And the movie ends. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more.